fellow Sudokans, and welcome to Zen and the Art of the Guardian Sudoku Puzzle. It's Monday the 5th of December 2022, an important date here in Thailand. Um, the late king, the king uh, who reigned from 1946 to 2016, that's throughout modern history really for Thailand, uh, it was his birth date and we refer to it in Thailand as Father's Day. Now there isn't really a standard Father's Day I guess in across the world, you know, the, we don't really have the, uh, such a thing. It's different in different countries but here in Thailand it is based on um, uh, the king's birthday, the former king's birthday. And uh, he is known to Thais as Rama the Ninth uh, in, in that particular dynasty. Um, and um, so uh, it's a holiday. Um, unfortunately for me, it's not absolutely a holiday. I've noticed I've got work to do today, so uh, I shall not be uh, uh, without anything to do all day. And um, I'm not sure if my cat is going to be presenting me with something as a Father's Day present. <laughs> After all the hard work that I do for it, no. Probably not. Anyway, uh, let's get on with our game of Sudoku. Now, it is Monday, and every Monday is Beginner's Day in the Guardian. They call it easy level, but the, the, pu the puzzles are so easy that an absolute beginner can attempt and succeed at this kind of puzzle. You really don't need any prior knowledge of Sudoku uh, to start with me right here today. And once you've played a couple of easy level games, hopefully you will try the more difficult stuff as well so shall we get on so what do we see we see a nine by nine grid nine squares across oh mouse is acting a bit strangely by nine squares down uh, and you can see that some squares are filled in with numbers two one four five three and if you look around the grid you'll find the lowest number is one and the highest number of is nine and that's of course because there are nine squares in each row and there are nine squares in each column. And we haven't quite finished though because there are these small blocks here which also contain nine squares. So what we do is just simply fill in the numbers one to nine in each row, column and block. And uh, because there are nine squares, it means each number must uh, occupy each row, uh, column or block um, uniquely. So there's only one number in each of the aforementioned Houses, the word house is sometimes used uh, by people who uh, uh, talk about Sudoku. Um, I don't use it much. So how do we go about filling in this puzzle and coming to a, a satisfying, a satisfactory conclusion? Okay, let's take an example. Let's look at this central block here. Now, as I said, we need numbers 1 to 9. What do we have so far? We have 5 and 8, so we're a lot of numbers missing. But if we happen to look at the twos surrounding, uh, what we can see is there is already a two in this row here. So can either of these twos, uh, sorry, can either of these two squares become a digit two? And the answer is no, because we've got a two here already. So let's do the same thing here. We've got two blocking across here like this. When I say blocking, I mean forbidding the squares from becoming a digit two. And we have a two here, which goes up here. So, and then obviously the five and the eight are already in these uh, squares here. So look, there is one white square. I've highlighted it in blue. We have one white square which is not affected by surrounding twos. And so we can be sure, 100% sure, that that is where the two goes in that particular block. Now that's the only two in that block. We don't need to look for any more twos in that block. As I said, numbers one to nine only. But we can take the two that we just placed and we can say that it blocks up here like this. And this two blocks up here like this. And so now in this block up here, we can find, again, we've got just one square that is not affected by these twos down below, right? So we know that the two has to fit in that square there. And so we can progress around the board, uh, making similar um, deductions. Let's find a nine in this block here. We've got a lot of numbers placed already. We've already got one to five. One, two, three, four, five already. So we're looking for six, seven, eight, and nine to finish the board here, all right? Now, uh, actually, if we look for nines in particular, I happen to know that we can do something uh, because I spotted these two nines in these two rows. And that means I know that nine blocks across here like this and nine blocks across here like this, again, leaving us with a single square for a nine. 
Now, now that we've done that, we can also take this six and say six blocks across here and there's only one square. Now, if we hadn't put the nine in, we'd have had two possibilities, right? Six could have gone there or there, but now we've already filled that with a nine that's no longer available to us. And so the six blocks across here, and that will be the location for digit six. Okay, still there, still with me. All right, good. Um, and uh, all we need to do is to uh, as I say, just go around looking for similar types of things. Um, so now here's the beauty of the game and where you need to start kind of think forward a bit. So one of our missing numbers here is seven. We're looking for seven and eight. We've got everything else except for seven and eight in this particular block. So imagine a seven is here, right? Now, if the seven is in this square, it means seven can't be in this row. And if the seven is in this square, well, it's exactly the same. Seven still can't be in this row, right? This row is now... Seven, because seven is in one of these two squares, it can't appear across here. Now, when we take this seven and say seven blocks across here, and this seven comes down here, well, we know that the seven has to be in this square here. So we worked out a seven in this square here, even though we don't know for sure which one of these two squares the seven is in, but it has to be in one of those two. And that's how we can say for sure that seven must be down here. Now, when I see a couple of empty squares in a row like this, I normally check out and see what they are. Um, it may be possible to finish the row off. And in fact, what we don't yet have are digits 5 and 8. We have everything else. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4. There's no 5. We've got 6, 7, and 9, but there's no 8. So what we need to do is we have to consider up the columns here, and we're looking for 5s or 8s. And I think you've probably seen it already that we do, in fact, have an 8 in this square. So no 8 can be down here. In fact, we know that 8 has got to be in one of these two squares, but we're not concerned with that at the moment. We just know that this 8 blocks this square, and therefore the 8 will be only possible in that square. And now we only have one empty square, so we know that 5 is the last number necessary to finish the series of 1 to 9. Right? Okay. Now, I can see some more stuff, but it's a bit more advanced, and I don't want to put people off on their first ever game of Sudoku by explaining things that are a bit more difficult. So I shall try to look for things that are a bit easier, first of all. And then if I don't see anything else, I shall have to come back and explain the slightly trickier things that I've seen. As I say, hopefully that won't be necessary. Um, so now I've got to find <laughs> things that are easy. Uh, so, okay, so here's something you can do. As I say, I, I can definitely see some ways forward here, but I don't really want to talk about them on a beginner level Sudoku. I'd much prefer to find something a bit easier if I can. So I'm just going to go through the numbers, highlight the numbers, and look at the patterns. That means, remember, you're using your eyes, scanning along up and down the columns and rows to see what can go where. Now, I, I see a lot of twos, but I know that we can't finish the twos off because the available squares for twos are like this. We have four squares, right? Now, that means that if two is in this square, two will be in that square. But if two is in this square, two will be in that square. So we have two more digit twos to find, but we don't know which is which just yet. So we shall just continue clicking through and looking for Ah, there we go. See, I knew I would find something easy, so I've seen it now. So now when I click on digit 3, I can. it's attracted my eye over to the left-hand side, and now I can see the 3s blocking up these two columns, and that's going to give me a 3 there like that. Now, if you're playing with pencil and paper, of course, you don't have any highlighted things, but uh, I do recommend trying pencil and paper, especially at the beginning. It's definitely a good way to play the game and learn the game. Uh, when you get to the trickier stuff, uh, it's probably a good idea to switch to the computer because you get a lot of assistance. And I'm not talking about hints, online hints or something like that, or, or you know, hints in the app. I just mean that just the fact that you can highlight numbers helps to attract your eyes to it. And uh, also, if you make a mistake, it will probably alert you to that mistake, which is a good thing. Right now, we have threes blocking across here, so we know that the three must be in that square there. Okay. Um, what else?
else can we do? I'm just going to go through. So I can't I can't do much more about the threes as they stand. Uh, they are in a position that I can't really um, finish them off just yet. So I should do a bit more searching. As I said, clicking on numbers and using my eyes backwards and forwards, up and down uh, to see what's possible. And hopefully I'll see something easy um, like this five so okay we don't yet have a five in this block here so if you'd like to examine the fives around it you can click on a five like this and have a look and see what you can see and hopefully you will have discerned that in fact a five has to be in this square here so let's see that why that is we've got five blocking across here five down here five up here and so we know that five must be in that square there And uh, OK, now uh, I don't think this is too difficult. Um, I can see a couple of things that we can do with our, uh, as I say, kind of uh, imagining or thinking forward. Let's put it like that. Let's do the slightly easier one first. We've got five blocking across here. Actually, I think they're the same difficulty level. Fives block like this in up here, right? We've got the five up here, five across here. So we are left with a couple of fives here. When I say a couple of fives, of course, I don't mean uh, five can appear in both. Five can appear in either of those squares. So five is either here or it's here. But wherever it is, it definitely blocks down here. Do you agree? I'm thinking about this particular block here. So five blocks down here. We have five blocking up here like this. And now we have a five from over on the left here blocking across. Come on, mouse. So uh, do you see? like this and so the five must fit there and now down here we have a similar kind of thing so we have the five blocking up here which puts five into one of these two squares here right five then blocks all the way down here and we have a five blocking across here and so we can say that the five has to be in that square there that's as far as we can take them because we're going to be left with this, this kind of pattern as i showed you before uh, with whatever it was down here that I was showing you. So if 5 is here, 5 will be here. And if 5 is here, 5 must be there. But we can't say which is which just yet. Um, we have 7 blocking up here like this and 7 blocking down here. So that must be the location of 7. Okay, now in this um, column over here, column one, if you are looking for a numbering scheme, normally we number from the left and from the top down. So column one, uh, we don't yet have a seven, but what we now have is a seven blocking this square and a seven blocking this square. So in this column, we know that seven can only appear in that square there. Um, right, let's see what else is going on. Right, now our eight blocks across here and eight blocks across here. So this is the location of eight. And now there's just one empty square in this column here. And that must be filled by a nine. That's the last number we need. And now we'll take that nine and say nine blocking across here like this and across here like this. That gives us a nine in that square there. There's also a nine blocking from down here up here. It gives us a nine there. Uh, and then we have nine across here down from this column and up from this column which gives us a nine there then we can say nine is blocking across here and down there so that gives us a nine there and that was the final digit nine we've actually got nine a nine in each of our small mini three by three grids and so nine is now complete and it's our first digit to be completed um, we still have numbers one to eight in various places to com to finish um, but we have finished um, the uh, digit 9. Okay, now I know that I can get these two numbers now. And the reason I know that I can get these two numbers now is when you think of there are a limited number uh, 
of options up here, right? There are three numbers missing and they are limited because we have within this block only nine numbers. We have six of them already. And so as soon as you get these three numbers and know what they are, then we'll be able to say that this is the other number to complete the whole block, right? The, the, the column, sorry, sorry, to complete the column. So when we notice and see what's missing up here, what we don't yet have is one, we don't have a one, we don't have a six, and we don't have an eight. So we know that these three squares contain one, six, or eight only. Actually, we can see a one and we can see a six. We don't know about the eight, so we can't say which is which. We do know we have one, six, or eight here, but we can't say which is which. But what that helps us with is to say that this square here is not one, six, or eight. So what else do we need? Now, in fact, we only needed six and uh, seven and eight uh, to finish this block, right? We were only missing seven and eight. So we know that they, we have an eight in this set up here. So we know that this can't be eight. This, therefore, must be eight. And therefore, that has to be our seven. Um, OK, I hope you're still along with it here. And look, we can do something similar over here. We've got three a limited uh, series of three missing numbers there. And so we can get this particular digit here. Now, actually, in Sudoku, there is more than one way to do this, but um, to find numbers. But I'm just going to show you this for the moment. So what, what are we missing here? We're missing one, two, and eight. Now, actually, this time, uh, we can we can place uh, we can do something here. We can help to place at least one of these numbers. And the reason is because the 1 and the 2 are in the same column here. So remember, this is only 1, 2, or 8. So we ask ourselves about this square. Can it be 1? No, it can't be 1. Can it be 2? No, it can't be 2. And if it's not 1 or 2, then we know that it has to be an 8 don't we? And 1 and 2 will appear in these squares. And for the moment, we can't say which is which, but we have at least placed another number. Right, so now we are looking for this number, and we know that 1 and 2 are here. So what do we have? We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Is there a 6 anywhere in this row? No, we've got 7, 8, 9. So we know that 6 is our missing number. Now, you could have just said 6 blocks across here, and therefore that's the only empty square for a 6. So as I've said, there are often many ways, multiple ways to find the same answer. But the answer must be the same, will be the same, because each game has a unique solution. Right up in the top here now, we are looking for digit 3 to complete this column. That's the only thing we are missing. We've got everything else. 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 3 will complete it. Okay, we're going along very well now, I think. Um, and no need to rush. No need to hurry. Uh, if you are new to this channel, you might see games of different levels and people post timings and things like that. Now, the timings are there usually for people to show how easy or difficult they found the game. Not necessarily because people are trying to do it as quickly as possible, but there are people who love to do it as quickly as possible. And so they are often um, eager to show the short amount of time it took them to play the game. Now, you, as a beginner, you don't need to worry about that kind of thing. And I would suggest try to forget about time. Timing, Time is really very unimportant if you're playing Sudoku and not making a video like I am here. <laughs> and you shouldn't be making videos, I think, if you're just beginning, right? So six blocks up here and the six will appear here like so. Um, right, what's next to get? Okay, so now we have uh, a 1 blocking across this row here like this, and we can say that that square there has to be a 1, and now there's just one missing number, and that's a 3. Look, we've got 1, 2, there's no 3, we've got 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So that has to be a 3. Now, the one that we placed here will help us because if you remember, you may or have remembered or you may not, it doesn't really matter if you did or not, that we are missing a 1 and 2 in this block down here. So the 1 block's down here, so here is our 1, and this block will be finished with a 2. And we can take that 2 blocking up here, and we have a 2 blocking across here, and that will give us a 2 here. And now there's just one number to fill in at the end of this column, the top of this column, I suppose I should phrase it in that way. 
Uh, and that missing number is, I should tell you as soon as I find out, by the way, I don't play any of these games before switching on the camera, so I have absolutely no idea of the final answer um, ahead of you. Well, maybe you've got it before me because you might have tried the game already. So this is a four. Um, right. Uh, so what's missing from here? I think we the numbers that are missing are five and eight. When I say I think, I actually mean I know. Uh, and that means that the five blocks across here like this. So that must be our five. And that must be our eight. I hope you are still enjoying the game. And uh, learning how to play basic, very basic um, Sudoku. As I say, every Monday though. Uh, you can find games like this. Uh, but generally, uh, I have to work, and so I might not have as much time to explain things in a very slow manner. But you can go back and click on the older games where I do have more time. And there are a lot of them on this channel. Um, right, what else am I doing? <clears throat> right, now... Um, I'm not sure if I... Well, okay. There are two numbers missing here, which are 6 and 7. We need them for this block, or we need them for this column. But also, there are two numbers missing in this row. Now, if there are only two numbers missing like this, and there are only, and I mean only, two numbers missing like this, well, they must be the same digits. So if this is 6 and 7 like this, then definitely we are looking for 6 and 7 in this row as well. Now, be careful, because sometimes it might have more than two empty squares, and that wouldn't be true. But it is true in this situation. So now, when we look here, we say, can we find 6 or 7? We look across, no, no, we can't find it. But when we look here and say that we have 6 and 7, well, now we see something. We see that there's a blocking 6 here. So we know that this square cannot be 6, and therefore 6 will be there. And now we know that 7 will be in that square, and 7 will be in that square. We can kind of make a couple of uh, um, insertions at that point. Now, 7 has also finished. We also happen to have finished 2 along the way. So 2, 7, and 9 are finished digits already. We still have the others to look for, though. So um, the difficult thing about Sudoku usually is trying to decide where to go next. Now, when you're play, playing easy level Sudoku like this, you should look for like a couple where you just see a couple of spaces. Those are generally good places to look. I can't guarantee that they're gonna that you're gonna find something, but if you, oh excuse me, if you find a pair like this, it's good to investigate and see what should go in there. So let's try doing a few of these empty squares and see what we need then. So what do we need in this row? Well, we don't yet have a one and we don't yet have a three. We've got everything else: two, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And there will be people criticizing me for counting numbers, but I think as a beginner, you need to learn the basics. So, so one and three go into these two squares here. Uh, you could have just said one blocks across here like this and three blocks across here like this. So we know that one and three are in these two squares. Now, can we find them? And the answer is yes. And I'm, hope, I'm hoping that you're slightly ahead of me because you've already spotted that three up there. And if you have, you now say this can't be a three in this square. So this must be the three. And now we know that that has to be the one. OK, now we can take that one and say one blocking down here. Because it's highlighted, we can see, look, there is no highlight in here, so it's easy to see that we're lacking a 1. So 1 blocks down here. Here is our 1. And the last number to place in this block or this row is a 4. And now we're just one number missing from this column, so that's where we should go next. And um, the missing number is um, a 6, I believe. When I say I believe, I mean I'm sure. Uh, and now we're just one number for this block or this row, and either way, it's got to be a four. Uh, I think we'll take that four, four blocking up here, four blocking across here and across here, so now we know that that square there must be a four, and that was the final digit, four. Um, so we've almost finished the game now, going very well, I think. Uh, we still need to get one, five, six, and eight. Those are the numbers that we haven't yet 
done. And I happen to see that we can do our five because we've got five blocking across here like this, five blocking across here and five blocking up here. So we can say that must be a five. And now we're just one number short in this particular column and it's a digit one. We don't yet have one. So we'll place the one there and we'll take that one, one blocking across here and one blocking across here. That's got to be a one up there. And now we're just one empty square here and that's for a six so we'll place our six there and now we're one empty number for this block here and all this column and that's going to got to be an eight by the way we're only missing six and eight digits six and eight now so this eight blocks across here so that's our eight and we're just left with a six to finish today's uh easy beginner level puzzle from the guardian as i say every monday come rain or shine or electronic failure, internet downage. <laughs> no, we can't. We can't deal with that. Uh, um, there will be an easy level puzzle on here. But if you go back and see the back catalog, if you look at the end here, there should be a list of easy and beginner level games for you to try out. And remember, it's a practical thing. Don't just watch the videos. Please go and try the game yourself if you want to love the game of Sudoku. Uh, bye bye. See you another time.